Hello lovelies, happy new year, happy 2020. I'm Sophie, I'm 27 years of age and I wanted to get my story out there of my spinal surgery. Um, I was thinking of maybe doing this as like a three, four parter because obviously it's very quite detailed and I want to do like when I got told I needed an operation during the operation and then my recovery and then maybe even like being on here with mum so she can tell you her side of the story and how she coped with me being a bit very very clingy is the word <laughs> very clingy <laughs> but anyway I thought if I can get the word out and help other people then why the hell not why the hell not so it all started, sorry I've got notes on my phone, so I just want to grab them. Um, so it started when I was quite young in high school and um, I went to the doctors all the time because I had backache, which you know, you do when you've got spinal, like, spinal problems, you get the backache. And I went to the doctors, saw a doctor who told me that it was because of my backpack that I had pain. <laughs> my backpack caused me pain apparently. I don't understand how. But obviously me and mum were very not happy with that. <laughs> with that. So we um, got other people's opinions and um, went hospital, got myself an x-ray. And obviously when so I've done all the x-rays and I was then obviously went back to the doctors and got myself referred to a specialist in Oxford, Netherfield, which to be fair, best hospital I've ever, ever been to. So around the age of 14, I got told that I had kyphosis, which is curvature of the spine. I didn't have scoliosis. That's... It's very hard to explain. So rather than an S shape like this, I was a hunchback. Um, and basically shown from the x-rays, my where my curve was, it was like a block of bone, like my disc didn't separate. It's very hard to explain, but I, I should be able to import some photos. Um, so every single year I went hospital to Nuffield for a check up because at the moment there was like it wasn't moving, I wasn't really growing, it just stayed the same. So every year I just went back once a year for a check up. And then um, I remember I was, I think I must have been 24. 23 and I went back thinking oh yeah this will be the last time I need to come here oh no <laughs> I remember sitting in the waiting room unfortunately for me I was I was a very very heavy smoker and I remember sitting with my dad in the waiting room and I looked up at this sheet on the wall that says quit smoking now <laughs> and I remember thinking there and then oh no that's a sign it really was a sign and I remember thinking to myself they want me to quit smoking don't they like I need I need to quit smoking because I'm gonna have the operation and I remember being like oh my god I'm gonna have the operation and then um I remember going into the office to be told that my spine has moved a bit too much that it should do within the years and that I needed surgery <laughs> which obviously all this time I was trying to avoid avoid the surgery because I thought to myself that it, 
it's a bit too of a big operation for me to take in because I'm such a a wimp really well I'm not really anymore I'm very brave for what I went through so <coughs> so yeah I sat in that that room because my mum was like no 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 it's fine I'm not gonna come this year you're gonna be fine just you and dad go because we were gonna go shopping we either went shopping afterwards or beforehand and obviously Oxford is pretty banging and their Primark is pretty big so obviously I was going to shop while I was in Oxford but anyway I remember going into the office of my doctor telling me oh yeah your spine's moved too much we're gonna have to do the operation like it wasn't really if buts or not it was I had to because it was gonna save my life and so I was disappointed. I re I didn't want to go through it because I was so nervous that I would be paralysed. It was something that from a very young age scared me. Scared me a lot. So I didn't want I didn't want to go through it. But oh truth behold I had to. It was just it was in my cards. I just had to go through this operation. So, so yeah, um, was told I needed the operation, went shopping, did what I needed to do, went home, told mum that I needed the operation and obviously they, the hospital would help sort everything out for me and give me, you know, a pre-op date. My cats, sorry, <laughs> trying to get in. No. <laughs> um, so yeah, came home, told mum the, the great news of final surgery. Obviously I was coming back and forth to hospital because obviously they would explain in greater depths of what was going to go on, my pre-op and all of this. So basically um, what they had to do was break my spine and then there's like rods to like straighten it up and then they pinned it. I remember I got the operation date and I think it was meant to be February 8th no February, February February time but unfortunately my surgeon wasn't able to do it then so it actually got pushed back until April which was fine by me because I needed a bit more time to prepare if I was honest um because it it gave me had a lot of anxiety because I was so nervous about this operation because it was quite a high percentage of me getting paralysed that it did it just it made me anxiety ridden and obviously because of having the operation very soon I wasn't have I wasn't allowed to have anything to help me with my anxiety so I had to just try and cope <laughs> just cope on my own and just I mean to be fair I didn't actually learn anything I didn't go on the internet I didn't do any research of my own I kind of just thought to myself right I'm just gonna go in they need to do what they need to do and that will be it I didn't actually realize how more complicated it actually was <laughs> wasn't the fact that I just had to go in, have my operation and go. <laughs> Definitely wasn't that. Um, I should have researched really. I should have, I wish I had someone to tell me that it was going to be okay and that everything was going to be fine and that it actually wasn't as bad as what I was thinking it was going to be. But yeah, it was, um, it was pretty anxiety ridden up until my operation date. I meant my pre-op 
Um, so I went for my pre-op like you do with any operation and then I get told oh I need to um, get my blood done again because my protein was too high and obviously that could have meant anything but luckily for me it didn't mean anything I just had high protein in my blood I, I don't really no one really told me anything about it and it was fine um, I have abnormally low blood pressure as well which is probably why I'm tired all the time and the nurse did say to me she was like you're really tired all the time because of your low blood pressure I was like awesome at least now I know that it was <laughs> because of that and nothing else um, so yeah, leading up to the operation, which I might say for part two, because I feel like the before, like being told everything, and then part two is obviously the gruesomeness of what's ha what happened to me. Mm, maybe I should just do it all in one go. I don't know. No, we'll, we'll do another part two. Right. <laughs> Thank you for listening to my story time. And if you want to listen to some more, I'll um, be uploading part two very shortly of the proper surgery and what happened to me. Right. Thank you. Love yous. Bye.